Okay, okay. Well, like the sign says, holistic body worker, uh, podcaster. Ciao. Um, what more do I have? All these titles, you know, I use them for marketing purpose because, yeah, marketing. And I also need to manifest money. Um, and I've noticed we've been chatting a lot. A lot of, th a lot of things with the mind. Uh, and I heard people talking about manifesting from the heart. But like the heart says, heart, it can be hard to manifest from the heart when we have no fucking clue how to drop down into our body. And we are living in a time where the universe, like yin and yang, is uh, expanding and contracting. Day, night, living, death, heat, cold. So this plane of reality we are living in right now, we call the third dimension, it is a form in information, in formation, we don't call it in three or two mation, in formation, where we experience matter. But when we manifest things, um, health or wealth, whatever it, it is, it has to turn into matter. The body we all have, we're not a flying head, although a lot of people, especially in politics, are just flying heads. You know, that in the Netherlands we call onderwijs, which means underwise. Underwise. But most people in life are above wise. They're here very wise. And their body is just carrying them around. You know, for instance, a nice... Uh, posture or biomechanical pattern that I love seeing is this. Or another very famous one is this. And by seeing biomechanical patterns, the way a face is formed or how a body is posturized tells everything about the mind. And because the universe is we are, we are transcending from a, a time space like even uh, native uh, prophecies have uh, told us that we, they have a prophecy that goes as, as the following, to go into my story. It's about the eagle and the condor. And in the north, the northern hemisphere, we have the eagle, which uh, stands for the mind. In the south, we have the condor, which stands for the heart. And a lot of people, they tend to manifest with heads, like all the speakers here before spoke about. The universe has been exploring the mind and it created, it used polarity for that. Otherwise there was nothing to experience. And we're coming to an age where the mind is dropping down into the heart again. So now uh, personal development is getting hot. Uh, feelings are becoming normal. We're talking about emotions. <laughs> and also the emotions we really, really, really need to manifest. Um, because emotion, like literally, energy in motion, and how do you create in matter? Motion. If you're just standing still all day, or sitting and meditating all day, or writing, nothing is going to happen. Yes, you can think about the future. But life is going to throw things at you, and you have to interact with the movement. And emotion is felt in the body, not in the mind. And you can use emotion to create portals to manifest. Emotions are felt in certain areas of the bodies. And we also, many people know uh, about chakras. Chakra means wheel in, in Sanskrit. And a wheel is something that spins. Magnetism is something that spins between polarities. What is emotion? Spinning energy. So you can use emotion to spin yourself forward in life to create whatever you want to create. But if you have repressed emotions, if you have repressed thoughts whatsoever, you're going to manifest that into the matter in formation with, with conscious or unconscious intention. And suddenly you create the manifestations, but you're still feeling 
dreaded, hatred, uh, whatsoever it is. So I'm going to use this beautiful board that uh, Janneke brought from her daughter. And we have some nice uh, baby uh, wipe uh, things uh, to clean this. Uh, so, um, um, <laughs> Ilko de Boer, one of the Dutch uh, people who I, uh, I did a course with, he, uh, he says, always play your best hits. You know, just like you, you, you said, I've told my story over and over again, as did I. You know, when I was 19, I stepped into a hole during football training. My knee snapped back. Uh, I, I, I started carrying my weight on the right. So there I went, like this. And I went through life. I wanted to make my daddy proud because I was insecure. Uh, my, emo my father was emotionally unavailable. unavailable. So I, uh, after my uh, study on you know, high school and the MBO, I wanted to be a musician. But my father said, no, you're not going to make mo any money with that. So go study economics. Uh, so I did, and uh, uh, I made him write the old, the, like the, the, the essay on the final part. So I graduated, I worked in a uh, distribution center for a half a year because I didn't know I wanted to become a physiotherapist after that, uh, because I was in full of pain. And during that time, I already had a knee injury, I was working in the distribution center, I went through my back, I couldn't yet use my left leg no more, it was paralyzed. Uh, that happened a couple of times. Now, and so then you have like a knee you can't use. You have a lower back that uh, is uh, chronically uh, fucking you up. And went do uh, to do uh, uh, like HBO. I don't know HBO studies in uh, like just below university. <laughs> a bachelor. Thank you. Um, I, I I studied, but I. I didn't really know how to study except the things I really love. So I took Ritalin to really get through the studies. I be became really, really depressed uh, for one year because I couldn't use this knee. I couldn't properly use my back. My left shoulder started aching like crazy. My elbow, my jaw, and the final one was the depression. So, and that took my, like six years. I saw 14 different physiotherapists. Uh, teachers from the from other bachelor studies uh, from uh, from a famous football club in the Netherlands. We saw all these great minds who studied, who studied, who studied. No answers, but they gave me the right direction by not helping me, so I can uh, so I could uh, you know um, discover it all on my own. So six years forward, I was really really depressed, uh, and then. This guy in the, in the gym, he saw me, you know, stretching, mobility work, all the things that you see on YouTube and the internet, where you think, oh, that's healthy. You know, for instance, like deadlifting or squatting or military press or bench presses are all in the sagittal plane, really linear. But how do we go from A to B? We move, walking. And back in the days, when there was an animal behind our ass, we would sprint. If I was mad with you, I would punch you in the air. You would kick me, bam. Or I saw something I wanted to eat, I would throw something. But what do we do in the gym? <laughs> Beneath this kind of light, this, and this lighting also has a certain frequency. It's not similar like the sun. It's, it, it does not respect yin and yang, night, blah, blah, blah. So this is synthetic in uh, natural frequencies that we absorb all day long. Uh, but that's an older passage, that's light water magnetism, quantum biology. So um, this guy saw me screwing around in the gym and he said, what are you doing? What are you doing? A lion does not need to warm up when he, when he goes for a kill or when he does his thing. So I explained, I explained my story and he said, okay, just come by for a second. Uh, you're screwed already, so why don't get screwed one more time? So I went to Gerben, so let's call him Gerben, and uh, he did some muscle testing and he could find uh, hypertonic muscles. So my left medius was hypertonic, um, and because of that, it could not stabilize the knee properly. And in two hours, he made it go away and worked for one week, and then my hip was out of a sudden, whoosh, properly balanced, and I felt, 
this was the feeling that I was looking for all these times. And after that, a light went on. I was like this. Uh, fortunately, it didn't help. The, 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 the therapy was just, yeah, was, it was not sufficient enough. But it opened the doors. Uh, after that, I, I went to Wim Hof for a long weekend and uh, trained with some of his uh, uh, academy trainers. And after two days, my depression was gone by just some bre breath work, um, some ice bathing. And after that, I decided to start a YouTube channel, which was named Injured Dumbass. That's how I felt back in the days. And I just thought, all right, if there is this guy in the gym who does not have all the diplomas, and he works in a gym as an instructor, but he overclasses all the professionals that all of the people go to when they feel ill or whatsoever, then there's something wrong. So I decided to dig, yeah, dive deep and, and get as many answers and information I could get my hands upon. Uh, and I started the podcast and YouTube channel, yada, 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 years forward from uh, shadow work, trauma work, uh, bioenergetics, uh, theory, breath work, blah, 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 blah. I explored so many things. And uh, now I'm uh, like this. <laughs> so to, to um, give you a short overview, this is one of the things that I really, really like. I really like to, to watch uh, patterns, to watch faces, because your body and the way you look, the way you talk, your ears, etc., it's all a direct reflection of the mind. And soul, eh, that which is having the experience, which is a reflection of God, God, Allah, Krishna, Buddha, Ah, is a sound, universe is sound, experiencing itself. And soul is like a fractal of that. And to experience matter, God created an ego, persona, sonos means through sound in old uh, Greek. So your ego is like a math with an own sound. And you are all playing in the big show of the matrix. And, um, and the, one of the things that I, I like is that, for instance, um, sayings, like carrying a burden on your shoulders doesn't fall out of the air. Or I know many Dutch uh, sayings, so uh, or yeah, something on the liver. It's like in Eastern medicine, they know all these things. And in the West, we need to have numbers. It must be scientifically proven, peer-reviewed science, which is a name uh, that came up that the CIA thought of. Uh, by the way, um, so, and that's like, like the paradigm shift that uh, Marlene was talking about, or sorry, Elina was talking about. I have to see it first and then I can believe. But in God's creation, it's the other way around. So the left knee stands for inflexible ego. The left shoulder is directed to the, to the liver. The liver, where you tense up fire energy, anger, rage, and I had lots of rage towards my father. The lower back, when you're feeling stuck in life, when you just, you're nailed to the ground or a chair, you cannot move. The body mirrors the mind. The mind thinks it cannot move. For what reason whatsoever, so the body will give you what you are thinking of. And also, so you can experience it. Otherwise, it's just a thought, and you don't feel anything. And life is about all its, its, its possibilities. So all these body parts, they speak to you. The body speaks to you all the time. And you can find uh, all these certain or meanings, let's say, it, is in psychosomatics. So psyche, somatica, somatics. So how does it work? Before, because we're also going to do some live uh, breath work today, uh, other, uh, because if we don't, it's only head shit today, and that's, uh, that's spicy. Um, so this is one of my greatest hits that I tell every people all the time. And I just got a question from somebody that I can use uh, as an example. Young lady? Yeah. What's your name? Sam. Sam. 
Sam, can you please uh, share the case with us? Yes. Yeah, so already for my whole life, I have like very tense hands, and I feel the tension in my hands like in the most relaxed moments in my life. So when I watch a movie, when I listen to someone, when I talk to someone, it's like I just have constant, like, or when I hold the steering wheel, I have constant tension in my hands. And I don't like really judge it or feel that it has anything to do with me. Yeah. because it doesn't really feel that's my tension because whenever I feel it, I'm like super relaxed. So it's super weird. And by my ayahuasca experience, I actually like kind of saw that it maybe has to do with my grandmother trauma. And then after that, I found out that my aunt was the same. So it's like, and we are like related to a trauma. So maybe it comes from her, but like, and they don't really know what's mm -hmm. the you know? So what do you want? Yeah. Right. So you're thinking you want to relieve something. Yeah. So if you go to Elina, what has Elina told you? And before that? If you are thinking you want to relieve something, what will manifest? Yeah, just to feel it. Like feel the relief. Yes. Yeah, true relief. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's like this is thing, like, I can, yeah, like, it's not that I didn't practice it because I've been doing this work for two years and I want to feel relaxed, but it's like it's so unconscious. Mm -hmm. like it's, so, it's just happening before I even think about it or look at myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's super unconscious, like, deep within my consciousness that is like happening. So it's already happening before I can feel or think about it. Mm -hmm. And do you want it to go away? Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's the fuck up. Because yeah, you do not like need it, you're attracting it. Yeah. It's like a balloon, you know, in, this, in the subconscious, it's pressing towards the conscious mind, saying or want to make you feel for yeah. certain things. You're saying, uh-uh, 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 I don't want to feel this. And then you go on, you go on a journey and plant medicine and they say, oh, it's your grandma and this and that and that and uh, oh, it must be in the bloodline. Maybe it is. But that, that's the question. But this, but when do you actually like, like manifest something into like reality and like just going like past the trauma and actually like really work on the trauma if it is a trauma? Yeah. And, like what? That's for me, like, of course, I can try to manifest it, but I'm also like, okay, you know, I want to release, from, like, some trauma within my own mind to release it from my own mm -hmm. and to shine a light on this and, like, you know, raise consciousness about it. That's just like, oh, I don't want it to be there, so I need to move on. Yeah, the point, the point, the point that I was making is because you do not want it, you are attracting it. Because there is a focus point on what you do not want. Well, I want so it, yes, but... When you want to solve something, you only want to solve something because there is a problem. Because you are thinking it is a problem, it remains in, inside, eh, in the cell membrane, cell my brain, in, in, in your water, it's, you're this big container, and, and how many years are you already thinking this? Ten years. Ten years. So, so you're heavily conditioned to think you have a problem. And you're heavily conditioned to think it must go away. And that's why it's still in your life. So acceptance of it is what it is, and it feels how it feels, that's like one of the, big, the biggest uh, quantum leaps you can make in this part. Because if you do not want to give space to that which or what is, consciousness cannot experience itself. And God is all about exploring consciousness. Whether it's right or wrong, blue or yellow, whatever, God doesn't give a shit. God is unconditional love. And it created conditions so it could learn how to love itself conditionally. So uh, I, will, I, will, I will show you why it happens when you are like watching TV or that kind of stuff. So this is your house. How, uh, what's your age right now? 32. 32. So this is a big, a big, a big, a big ass cornfield. And in the middle we have, a, we have a, a nice open space. Sam is, right? So we're going to drop Sam with a helicopter. There she is. Look at that.
What do you think Sam is going to do? Take the helicopter. The helicopter is gone already. Walk back home. Walk back home. Exactly. So she's going to make a path in the cornfield. And then she's going to walk back home. But we are assholes. And we're grabbing the helicopter again. We're dropping it down again. And Sam thinks. <laughs> Lunatics. She goes nine, of, nine out of ten times. Uh, electricity takes the path of least resistance. So she's walking back the same path. And we just keep doing this over and over again. And this, this illustrates your neural pathway. And then we come to a default network. That your brain is nothing else than a conductor of energy. And you are sending signals all day long with your intention. That's how you create uh, uh, intention. And what is electricity? Tension polarity. So now it comes. Um, if this is life, the cornfield is life, the environment, when you were zero to seven, you were living in Tida. Like Elena knows all about this because Joe Dispenza and uh, Bruce Lipton, they talk about this, the biology belief, etc. cetera. You're, you're living in theta wavelengths. So your brain is in a state of hypnosis and you're experiencing it just, just before you go to sleep or when you're waking up. That's why if you wake up, you grab your phone, and you see a fucking annoying message or something, you feel shitty. That's why you feel shitty all day long, because you shift from theta to high beta and alpha. This, these are the brain wavelengths that you are all witnessing me right now. If you were not, you were just like a big sponge of fantasy. That's why children, most of the time, do not give a shit and they're just living and, and fantasizing about everything and anything. And they're sucking in information. Why? Because if they grow older, they're not zero or seven anymore, but they're 32, they behave like the, herd, like the group. Why? We would survive that way. So it's very handy for us to think and behave the same way like this did. So if our ancestors had similar things, and you grow up with mama who did something like that, and you you know, consciously or unconsciously, you, said, you have ex experienced that, that can already start in the womb, then you think that's normal. And you're just copying vibrations in, your, in, your ex in, in the environment. So now that's not the only thing. We all have these nice experiences like uh, uh, on school, I had, to I had to shut up, sit quiet, and raise my hand if I had a question. Um, Daddy was uh, emotionally unavailable, my dad was, so emotions. <laughs> That's stupid. Uh, my mom was uh, chronically depressed, used antidepressive uh, medication uh, for all her life, uh, uh, was raped uh, back in the days. Uh, my brother was at, at a MCDD, was uh, at a psychosis, uh, committed, uh, tried to commit suicide a couple of times. Uh, my sister, uh, bulimia, it was, a, it was a beautiful playground back home. <laughs> so my, my way of coping with all the, well, all the stuff was freezing. So just go inside, uh, hollow eyes, and just let everything be or go away. Or I would use humor. So that's my thing that I'm still uh, experiencing. So we have all these things, and because we are today on the, abundant, uh, <laughs> the abundance event, if you think you are not valuable, if you think you're, you are worth shit, you will manifest a life where you are proving yourself that you are worth shit. And it's until you meet the inside, the inside will meet you on the outside. So Sam, now you are 32, and you are not in Tida anymore, and you have this big fucking neural pattern that is thinking that you have a problem. I mean, your mother had and your grandma had. I'm not saying it's not true, because it probably is. But this is just an example how conditioning works. So now you did this conditioning work for more than 10 years, so probably you already, when you were created in the womb. So now you have a physical body. And in the material world, you know, we live on certain planes. It's being said that we have 12 planes, and you know we live on the third. So now this has been materialized. 
and you want to get rid of this stuff, the first, the first thing that comes to mind is one of, one of the things that I work with. Um, I don't have enough space here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, so we have the body and we have the mind. And in your case, there is a split. Because uh, uh, there is this guy, his name is Hild Waskin. He's the creator of the Sedona method. It's, uh, it's a brilliant method especially for people who like things to do with their mind. Um, and a lot of the times you hear people saying, you can let go of the past. You can just let go. And you can just live from the heart. Oh, really? Can I? So how do I do that? How do I live from the heart? And how do I just let go? So Hill was 42. He was a, a Turkunder, Walter White. Physics, <laughs> physics uh, professor, um, and he got his second heart attack. Went to the hospital, you know, got uh, got stitched back up, and then his doctor said, "I think you have two weeks to live." So I would make the best out of it. So in talking of a pep talk, that would be a nice idea to plant in somebody's consciousness. He went back home, and then he uh, went inside, and you know, questions like, "Who the fuck am I?" and I, I had my dream car, I had family, I had the house. Why am I going to be gone in two weeks? So he started giving space and experiencing all the thoughts and the feelings, etc. he experienced in his life. And he started noticing that when he had a feeling, you experience through the body, and he would, you know, for instance, uh, shaking hands, which is tension getting released, and if you have that chronically, then that's another case. I'm going to show you how that works later. Um, he noticed that if he would be just give space to the experience, he could drop down a level. So, for instance, I have pain in my, or I, uh, this all, it's also a thing, I have, instead of I feel, you're not having anything or feeling something. Also, language is a very, 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 uh, important role in creation in matter. Um, but that aside, he gave space to his pain, he gave space to his uh, uh, emotions, he gave space to his thoughts, and if, if in, when he did it long enough, he could, like, here's the shoulder pain, and he gave it space. Then out of a sudden, thoughts came up. Yada, 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 yada. And he experienced that long enough, and he just let them be, and then he could drop down another level. And out of a sudden, his belly was hurting. He gave that space. And he went down again. And out of a sudden, images came up from his father beating him, beating him almost to death. He gave space to the, those images and feelings that arise. And you just keep going down and down and down and down and down and down. Until you come to the core and this whole chain of events. And you know what's there? Consciousness, experiencing consciousness. It's just a story. And the story has been materializing over and over and over again. And you are nothing else than a perceiver of consciousness. You are, or you are a perceiver. And when you go to the core, he noticed that he, he created a, 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 a let go command. Like you cannot, if you say you're going to try something, you're going to try something. But how about if you say you're going to do something? So it's letting go. You're going to start, I'm going to try to let go of this pencil. No, it's, I'm letting go. So it's with his mind, he gave a command, a command to his system, I'm letting go. But the thing is, first, he gave space to all the feelings, where, whatever it was. And most people nowadays are scared shitless for pains. Oh, I have a tummy, a tummy problem. I have to go to the doctor. I need medicine. Oh, there is a virus. I need a jab. Oh, uh, I have a headache. Uh, oh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Something else is going to fix the inside. Instead of, can you just be with a, what, whatever it is? 
People are so, so conditioned to think something else is going to save them. So if there's a pain or a, nag a nagging body part, don't say, I have, I feel. If you say, I have something, then you are sticking, identifying with it. Or saying, I am, I am an injured dumbass. With creating that name for my YouTube channel, channel I was creating my own hell. Because I was just recreating my injured dumbness shitness. So Corona woke me up and I, <laughs> I got rid of the name and just called myself Matthijs. <laughs> Um, which means gift, of, gift from God. It's much better. Thank, thanks God. So uh, Hill, Hill did that for many, many, for a long time, and he fixed his uh, all his his shit. There was a book uh, wrote about it. It's made in Sedona. That's why it's called the Sedona method, and it's a beautiful part for the mind. Now you also have a body, so your body is shivering, for instance. Uh, like the tension in your hands, right? So when you go to bed, you're here. The subconscious mind, like Elina also told, like we have a, a 95 to 5% ratio where the subconscious mind, you know, you don't have to think about your pulse, about breathing, about your digestion, about, uh, I think I have to contract my left, uh, left glute medius and my uh, posterior tibia. Uh, no, it's been done for you. You don't have to think about it anymore. It's all stored in your DNA. You know, your DNA is the, is the receiver of in information in the universe and it's also um, carrying your ancestral uh, patterns. So, fun fact, yeah, you, you, you get all the fun things your ancestors experienced, but it's nothing else that experienced. So, when you, um, when you are it's, it's getting a little bit crowded over here with all the information. Uh, so it's with 95% subconscious, 5% consciousness. So your consciousness, for instance, is um, watching to me right now, but your subconscious mind is digest digestion, blood pressure, breathing, posture, uh, the way your face is is hanging, <laughs> you don't you don't you don't have to think about it. Your hormones, it's all being taken care of. <laughs> your, your your face looks looks supreme, by the way. There's not, not, nothing wrong with your face. That was his own projection. <laughs> so when you are in those. Th theta waves and you finally are consciously doing something then the subconscious can finally come up with the balloon and make you feel the shittiness or make you feel the trauma but you have not gone to the trauma conscious enough like Hill did to the core of the of the trauma when it if you go there and you apply certain principles like letting go with the Sedona method or the work of Byron Katie uh, combined with bioenergetic work so you need to incorporate the body. If you do not use the body, you can let go, and you can meditate, you can journal, and that kind of stuff. But because we are manifesting in matter, your body is programmed so many years with this uh, case, that if you do not use the body, it's gonna take a long time before you manifest yourself healthy again. So why not use the body? So to give you an example, my lovely assistant, Elina, is going to show you a video. <laughs> so this video is about a Navy SEAL, an American Navy SEAL who went on service in, uh, in uh, I think, in Afghanistan. And he, he was in a Humvee, and he drove over a, 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 a bomb. Here to talk to you about the experience I had with exercise. When I first got through that ego portion of the day, I started to experience this shivering in, in my comfortable body. I started shaking uncontrollably, which kind of felt good. It, 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 was, it was a good releasing type movement, almost like an automatic <laughs> massage of my internal muscles that stabilized your body. 
And and then it went directly up into my shoulders, where I presume that I was. And at first it was just one shoulder, then it was both shoulders, and then it started to be hips and my shoulders, and then it became this this convulsing forward, which you saw in the video. It's interesting because what we put together is that my experience with the roadside and my IMP going off was that I probably was in the space in this way. And I probably, when the blast went off, pulled over this way, which brings up. And then as I breathed into the effect more, I started to have emotions come through it and, and memories. And, and what happened was this, it was almost like a from, from my father. That's the only way I can, and it was a like something left. And I'm not sure if that was, but the whole experience of the hall was incredible. I'm not incredibly black and from the test but uh, and then again yeah, put the ego aside and and do this. It, you will you will thank me for it. So so what happens when he drove over the the, the bomb, his subconscious took over, he went into a freeze. We have this polyvagal theory of Dr. Deb Dana. Here you have uh, the freeze, here you have fight or flight, and here you have happy, you're grounded, you're open, and you can receive all beings and information in a lovely manner. You know, if you get stressed, the energy rises up, you, you start contracting a little bit, fight or flight response goes on, ooh, maybe I have to hit somebody in the face or run as fast as I can. And if, you do, if the organism does not know how, what to do to survive, it goes into a freeze, and then it plays dead. Because we are a complex uh, eukaryote. Eukaryotes, uh, it's like uh, one of the first uh, tiny creatures on, the, on this planet. Ongeslachtelijk voorplanten op de bodem van de oceaan. We can also do that kind of stuff. So we can just contract. And his body went into a freeze so he could survive, but because he was conditioned not to give space to his emotions, like uh, and feelings and thoughts, and he would identify all the time with them. He could not create space for them, and then the body just keeps the tension. So when he let go, that part of what he had to experiencing, <laughs> that was what he wanted to do after that. So now you're all walking around here, and you're sitting here, and by, by, <laughs> like. The way your body is composed, I can already tell so much about you. Like, how, what is your biggest pain? What is your biggest longing? Everything is just a reflection of itself. So, but nonetheless, uh, the guy... <laughs> the guy... <laughs> I'm watching all of you guys. <laughs> The, the guy, he went to his Dr. David Berselli, and Berselli is, uh, is uh, the creator of TRE, Tension and Trauma Releasing Exercises, and that's just a manner of a bioenergetic form that you can like activate the tremor mechanism that also, when you're laughing, you're not laughing, ha, 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 when you're crying, you're, eh, no. <laughs> what are you doing? You're moving energy with your whole body. And the deeper you cry, the deeper you rage, the deeper you laugh. The more you move, the more you are alive. Hell is being, is cruising between polarities. And if you do not want to feel shitty, or you do not want to feel what you're feeling, you're getting stuck on one side, and then the other side falls away. And that's how people start getting burnout, depressed, so we yeah, so we science. Uh, uh, there, there's no opposite again. <laughs> so the problem is the energy is stuck. 
Eh, energy, chi, the energy is stuck. So with, with bioenergetic uh, exercise, we're getting the energy moving again. If you do not want to feel something, it goes so fast, you're contracting. Like, how was your day? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> and uh, how was the relationship with your father? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> we're, uh, we're going on a hike uh, next, uh, next uh, winter to Norway. We're going to see the Northern Lights. Right, nice, man. And uh, so things are working out with you and your dad. Yes, of course. So also when you are starting to tell something, the body literally wants to flow away from something. And a nice story about that, and then we're going to go into some, uh, some breath work. It's a story about Mark Rolin, because family systems, they do play a big part in, in dynamics of energy. Mark Rolin is one of the, 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 the people who made family dynamics large in the, in the States. Mark was blind on his right eye, but he was not born with this blind eye. So in his, during his puberty, he had, he had huge amounts of fights with his dad, and he really grew apart from his father. He, he really was disgusted and hated this guy to the bone, to the bone. And when he was old enough, he went to India, you know, to meditate. Again, meditation. Uh, in caves and hang out with gurus. And his first guru, he, uh, he went to and said, uh, do you see what's up? So uh, do you know what's, what's, what's wrong with me? And the guru, he watched him and he said, yeah, you must. And he was like, fuck this shit. I'm going to another guru. <laughs> so he sat behind for three days. You know, you get three gurus in India, you, you, but you have, to, you have a lot of invest a lot of time. Um, and then to the second guru, and then, you know, he sits there, and uh, the guru, uh, <laughs> so uh, the guru watches, watches me, and I say, oh, I see it, you must see your father. And then he was like, man, it fucked up. All oh, these gurus. And he tried a third time, and the third guru said exactly the same thing. Now, why? did the guru knew he had to see his father. On what eye his blindness was? The right eye. What is the right side? That's the yang side in Eastern medicine. The right eye is linked to the left brain. What do we create over here? Dopamine and adrenaline. What men are more focused and driven by future and optimistic. What do they need for that? Dopamine and testosterone. The other side, the left eye, is, y is yin. Feminine side, serotonin, melatonin, night. So just by seeing and watching him in the eyes, he could already see, see something. Oh, you do not want to see something. And how he knew it was his dad, I, I do not know. But uh, like, you know, aligned, aligned 3.0 uh, consciousness, uh, bam. But that's, that's how genius the body is by mirroring what's going on. So most of the time, you do not need a pill. You do not need a jab. You do not need something external. You can use it because via the external ways we can experience ourselves. Eventually, we have to deal with reality. So if there's something in the line with your mother that she or, or your grand-grandmother does not want to see and your hands are combined with it, the hands are, have to do with creation, grabbing things, creating things. So what's up with creation in your life? Yeah. Oh yeah. That's my journey. Yeah. To like move more into creation, like the creative field, because I've been like so into like the masculine energy of the like, just strategy, business, like really planning, doing not like really from the feminine side, like really creating stuff. So this is what I like mm -hmm. flowing into now for like two years. And yeah, I'm curious if that's going to be the thing, you know, that's going to like release this, mm. you know, like, or not. But I'll be trying not to approach it that much or like to accept it. But yeah, it's an interesting journey. Yeah. I don't really know what to Like, you know, I think it has to do a lot with the creation, but I'm not sure if I'm With breath work, we're going to drop down more into the theta brain wavelengths uh, because the way we're going to do it, uh, we're going to do, we're going to breathe with one of my favorite drum songs. 
and it builds up to an ecstatic orgasm. And at the orgasm, I'm going to ask you to push all the breath out. You're going to relax for a couple of, for, for some seconds. And when I say, we're going to breathe in back again, and then we're going to hold the breath and make and tense every muscle in our system. By that way, we're, we're energizing our blood. Right? We're, we're pulling it. We're electrifying ourselves and the electricity via the contraction via the Ruggenmergvloeistof. Uh, <laughs> bone marrow fluid. It go, we're contracting it upwards to the pi, to the pineal gland, uh, and via the pineal gland, we're going to release lots of hormones: dopamine, serotonin, uh, 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 cannabo, cannabo, cannaboide, so cannabinoids. Um, and they, those are perfect for pain, uh, to increase your pain levels. That's why Wim also does this before an ice bath. Um, so you can deal with the pain more easily, but also that is more mind. So that's what, what we're going to do in a second. And that's going to bring your energy in movement. So this is one of the things that you can use to um, bring the stuck energy in flow. And, you know, also in bioenergetics, for instance, we have, uh, 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 if you are interested in that, I have a Dutch masterclass, it's called Wat je lichaam je probeert te vertellen. Um, and we, we also teach education, like four live training days with, uh, 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 with, my, uh, with my partner to teach you all these methods and, and ways you can use and... Uh, because if you do not use the body, you're going to just keep journaling and meditating. And it's, yeah, it's uh, just doing both. It goes much more fastly. You can create a dream life you want, whether it's in a healthy way, in a wealthy way, much more easily when you incorporate those uh, things. So. Yeah, good question. Do you think that if something happens over and over again, not like... With um, with your body, but like also like falling and breaking things. Yes. 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 You are attracting a, a frequency. So uh, in the karmic in in karma, it's it's karma. Is just it's the reflection of the the drift the, the the ripple. So you could have done something in a previous life, uh, and you are now able to learn the lesson, and that's why you you fall. Because like anything you experience in 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 my case, everything that I thought was not good. In the end, it was good. But because you were down in the chaos, you could not see why it happened and how it was useful and what, is, what it was about to go to teach you, etc. I could not see how brilliant my life was planned back in the days because I was only focusing on my pain. So my answer is yes. There's also Christine Beerland is an, edit, uh, an author who writes about psychosomatics. She has a, uh, the Sleutel tot Zelfbevrijding. And that teaches you all the body psychomatic uh, answers. She also has a book about why you tend to eat certain foods and what those foods tell you in a psychosomatic way. And she also has a book about, for instance, I drove here and I, 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 I had two flat tires on my drive here. Left and right. Back in the days, my, uh, all my problems were on the left side, my feeling side. Also, my car was also always left. So that's... That's how the universe is, is mirroring you. And you are the universe. You're just a fractal of that. So, Why do you think that you have left? Well, the left one was uh, because I, I, I really did not prepare. I, 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 after my... I had an accident uh, last winter time. And I had to use the spare tire. And, that's, and my car is from 1999. So it's an old BMW. Uh, and I love, I love him. It's my first car. And I did not replace the tire. So I was driving around with an old tire, so that's just stupid. <laughs> so you also get married in your stupidity. And, but the right one, I don't know. It's, it was a, like a brand new tire. Um, slow down. I was, yeah, slow down maybe. I don't know. There was also an eagle coming to my motor hood uh, uh, just before it happened. So, But it also made me just feel I can just, when I... I learned in the process with all these French people who speak really terrible English, I, I could use Google Translate and still, and if I could use my charisma and, uh, well, guys, I'm really fun to speak on a new 
to go uh, uh, this uh, Saturday it is today? Yeah. Saturday. Um, please help me. And then suddenly people can help me. Before, we, before this week I went here, I called some uh, uh, car shops and they, they didn't want to help me. Because it's completely full. But if you really want it, it happens. So that's the lesson I took from it. So it's a nice kick in the butt from, uh, <laughs> all right, boy, if you want something, you're going to get it. But you have to work for it, boy. So that's my lesson. But I, I do believe everything happens for a reason. Luck does not exist in this flow of consciousness. It, or like that luck, it's all, it's, all, uh, it's all reflection. But that's how, this is all what I'm telling you is my reality. So you can take everything like with a grain of salt and experience and discover your own reality. But this is what I use and I have whole methods and techniques and how I heal people with chronic injuries and diseases in, in two or three months. <coughs> I made a course with Dr. David Baselli on TRE. Uh, I, I, I spoke uh, to many people who, who really know their shit. And uh, that's what I'm here to do, to share the message. It's, uh... So, with that being said, any other questions? Yeah. We understand all of this for adults, but for example, how is it with children, for example, when your child is born healthy and then at 10 months it uh, gets diagnosed with diabetes, and I think the children, they don't build up this, because I mean, they're smaller. So, how can you... Well, with children, nine, nine, 9 out of 10 is the parents. I, uh, for instance, when I started, studied uh, orthomolecular uh, 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 medicine, we had this uh, teacher who also, you know, there was this kid, diabetes, uh, eczema, that kind of eczema, I don't know what... Uh, eczema. Eczema, most people with eczema, they do not want to be touched. So they are, they are saying, please love me, touch me, but they do not want to touch themselves. So then the skin pops out and, sa and sends the message, don't touch me. Um, but th those parents, they were giving diary, uh, lectins, gluten, all the shitty things that inflames your intestines. So, you know, we have psychosomatics, but we also have uh, earth things. Like, do you sleep well? How is your diet looking? Uh, uh, do you sleep with the router on? Uh, do you live uh, next to a 5G tower? Um, you know, it's all frequency. So if the parents, nine out of ten, ten, nine, nine out of ten, it's the parents, and if not, then the soul incarnates as a kid and comes to share a message. So, you know, for instance, children dying of cancer, and the parents are healthy. That's then. Then there is a, a really deep message in that particular death, and then I would advise go to plant medicine if you're not able to connect with the soul. The answer to your question? We have a question. <coughs> um, why we were born uh, from embryo when we were in our mother's stomach? Mm -hmm. We <coughs> didn't breathe, we were in a liquid. Mm -hmm. Probably we can even. Yes. Maybe we don't. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, but the thing is. <laughs> I, I wrote down those manifestation layers, and we have time and space. And in time and space, matter has to... I 100% I, I believe it's possible. David Icke says we have been certain there is... It's called... Uh, there has been implanted a mind virus in the human consciousness. It's called Vetico in the Native American uh, uh, cultures. And Vetico is an... Uh, a parasite that lives off polarities, feeding fear, anger, rage. So every time you are polarizing yourself or somebody else, you're feeding the consciousness. And in one of my plant ceremonies, I had to uh, go through Vetico, and it was like there was a parasite, like a, larv a larvae, in, my fr in front of my head, and it was this size. And all night, I had to just give it space. Oh, there, is a, there it is. Oh, there it is. There it is. And um, why I'm telling you this is because I'm going to get to you sooner, is we've lost so many incredible capabilities of our consciousness. We are capable of doing the most magnificent stuff 
that you can think of. So, but it takes time and space to manifest itself. So you, if you want to, you know, put it on your uh, smart your board and uh, meditate, and uh, <laughs> one day you'll be there. And if it's not in this life, it is in another life. You know, time is an illusion. So, or you can just take take a quantum leap and. Don't forget to check out at the North Sea. <laughs> so yes, did I answer your question? Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, the lady, and then the, the, the sir in the corner. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm a breath work facilitator, and I work with someone as well. So I do a lot of um, trouble-based work. Something keeps saying. So I I have I'm pretty connected to my emotions and feelings and I have lots of releases. I'm okay with the word releases. Um, the one thing though that I not know to feeling in my body at all is coyotes, which started at around twelve. Mm -hmm. Um so I'm just wondering what is your opinion on that? Do you have any advice or knowledge about the topic that so, let me just mirror your scoliosis. Not that. Not that bad? All right, just... So what does the spine... What do we say? Stand up straight. What does the spine uh, symbolize in life? Carrying yourself. If you're, not a cap if you're not capable of carrying yourself, the spine will reflect and your nose as well. The nose is a direct reflection of the spine. So your nose is probably also not completely straight. <laughs> so sorry, I gave you, I gave you another problem. <laughs> no, but is it, you know, scoliosis, most of the time, li literally, life is, life is too heavy. I, w I, would, I would really need to have, have a word with you to really go into your context. I can just, just do blah, 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 blah. Like the most easy thing is that I can say is, is uh, if you can discover all the, the, the programming that has to do with the thing that, the, that why your ego th still thinks it is life is heavy in what way or so ever, you will probably be get challenged in life in that manner. But um, when people come to me, you know, then I have to tell you my intake process and you know, what's your, what is your biggest dream? What is your biggest nightmare? Yeah, like all those people thought, if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. And if you do not know where you're going, then you probably have a nightmare. Maybe the nightmare is the scoliosis. I hope I don't die with scoliosis, or I hope I do not live with scoliosis for the rest of my life. So you will start to manifest scoliosis. So it's, it's, uh, I, I do not have a one particular answer because every every. Every person has a different context, and I cannot just <laughs> do this with somebody. So uh, you, you can send me a message, and I can I can I can see if I can give you uh, insights or help you out. Um, but if you feel breathwork is working and you're discovering yourself, well, right on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that has to is that. Yeah. I heard an interesting uh, thing. There was this uh, person in the Netherlands who does um, what an upselling in Engels? Constellation on disease. So, so you you constellate on disease. So you can a con can do a constellation on your. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 So that's the thing that comes up right now, and also, and otherwise, I just do yeah. Plant medicine, like most of the time, I, I work with psilocybin in my uh, in my uh, practice. So I, uh, you know, when you are on the table or you, for instance, there must be tensions in your body that are keeping you that way. So when I touch you there, and we go through all these layers, and then we go to the core, we let it go, and then some lot, something else, something else comes up, and we just keep going uh, until everything is gone and. That's like really simply put how I do it, how, how I do it. And I work with other people who can tell you all about your soul journey, your process, uh, biomechanics, uh, quantum biology, yada, yada, yada. So I do everything I can to, 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 to get it 
as optimal as, as, as possible. Um, well, I, 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 I'm not in Holland anymore. <laughs> yeah. ah, no, my, my practice is in Vogelsang next to Harlem. Um, but um, most of the time when I'm working with people, like I also teach people everything that I know so that I will never have to see them back again. So I have an online program um, for groups and also for individuals. And one of the latest modules is plant medicine. You know, if you're, if you're ready, you know, nine, of ten, nine out of 10 times, like, Jesus, man, respect for ayahuasca, respect for wachuma, respect for, some, uh, for uh, bufo, respect for uh, rape. Right? They're doing so much work that I cannot go into the, the depth like they can. They, their consciousness is and they just blow you open, bam. So if you're ready for plant medicine, I would say go do plant medicine. If you want to go tiny level up, then you could see me or somebody else who does similar work. But eventually, you know, the plants are here to teach us. That's the way Pachamama Earth is healing herself and uh, every, 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 every soul on this planet. So, but then again, just send me a message and I, uh, maybe we can, uh, okay, well then, 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 then it's already calling you. So go for it. <laughs> All right, sir in the corner. So again, what was the first sentence? Oh, like arthritis. Oh, arthritis. Yeah, like, is there like a way to heal them, release pain, something like that? Yeah, so the most easy part is, of course, go to the root, and if you pick the root, Everything vanishes, but there are many, there are many uh, ways you could go yeah. into this. It's like an, an injury. Not a, not a, not a, yeah. Do you experience arthritis? Yeah. All right. Well, we also have to do the breath work, but for instance, when, when with my clients, I, one of the first things that I do is I make a timeline. So for instance, with you, it's on the top, uh, arthritis, and on second, uh, I don't know, name something you don't like about your life. <laughs> I can also just made up things, or I drink, I, I drink too much. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, have a se I have a second lover, um, and I don't know how to combine it. I, I don't know how. <laughs> Well, that's uh, exactly blah, blah, blah. Uh, money, money is an issue, um, etc. So when we have, have come up with all these issues or problems or things of focus, then we're making a timeline from here is the, the moment that you were born. So here you are zero and now you are, what age? Four. 34. So then the question is, when did you start experiencing arthritis complaints? Two years ago, so some, somewhere here. Um, did you diagnose yourself? Yeah. No. You got a diagnosis? Yeah. How many? A lot. You got, no. but how many diagnoses you got? From just one. Just one, all right. So the first thing is always question the diagnosis because it's just a moment, it's a moment thing, you know? So then the question is, okay, now what, what happened? Then I go, all right, arthritis happened here. Then the second thing is, all right, it happens over here. And this happened, and there you were, uh, I don't know, uh, 28. Now here you happened, uh, uh, oh, there was, let's see. There was a drinking problem, was uh, 28. Second love was, uh, you were really early with that, you were 12, when you started seeing uh, other men. And uh, the money problems. Uh, <laughs> The money problems occurred around, uh, let's say, uh, 20 or something. So, and then I'm gonna poke, uh, because I, I, I listened to your story, I already did an, uh, like an intake form with all the, the things that I know about your uh, uh, nutrition, sleep, stress, uh, parasites, etc. So, uh, but then I put it on site, and then we're gonna do this, and then, when you want to be helped, that's a big one. If you do not want help, you're not going to get it. 
If you're open for help, then your soul opens up to me, see through you. And then I can see the real you. Now I just see this matter thing. But when I'm sitting in a room with you and you really and the soul opens up to me, then I can look past the material form. So sometimes an aura comes up, sometimes the face vanishes like I'm in like like the, the energy of this comes up, and I can see you and you can see yourself via me. And then I just start talking and luring for the bullshit you are doing to yourself. And then and so out of a sudden we have here something, here something, here something, here something, here something. And now you're just copying what you experience here on the other side of the lip bob. Uh, how do you say that? Uh, <laughs> the lip bab? <laughs> like the, I don't know how you call that. <laughs> so, and you just keep, oh, you keep experiencing this over and over until, until you go to the core. And this also has to do with your family dynamics, uh, big time. But it is a big hole of so many different things. And that's why I cannot, I can never give somebody an answer like, oh, just this, just do this. But if, if, if I would have, if I should give somebody that answer is just let it be. And that's one of the most hard things in the world. John Lennon got killed for it. Let it be. And your mind doesn't want to let it be because it doesn't want it. And because you, doesn't want, you don't want it, you keep, and you keep manifesting it over and over and over again until you learn the lesson. So that's it. But you can heal from everything, everything. You can let go of any complaint, any blockages, any dis-ease whatsoever, everything. Any other questions? What does it mean if you mean loads of cheese? Loads of cheese. <laughs> well, I, I don't know about the loads of cheese thing, but uh, in, in Holland we have lots of people who do a, a loads of cheese. <laughs> lots of cheese. <laughs> that you're living in, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm not uh, then that I would have to check that uh, the book about the, the, the cheese. <laughs> yeah. And when you're laying down, make a ball like this. You're gonna grab your own legs and you, you're pulling them towards you. So you're contracting as hard as you can while you are holding your breath. So you're empty, you breathe in. And we do that for something like 10 seconds. And that's how Wim gets high on his own supply. And that's what you're gonna experience and besides of that, because we are, we're bringing motion into our body. We're bringing energy and flow back into parts where energy may have got stuck or not have been for a while. So you can feel uh, pain, dizziness, heat, cold, uh, emotions, images, thoughts, whatever. Just give it space. You're gonna be the space holder for yourself and you're gonna go into an observer mode for yourself. And while that is happening, like I thought with the TRE guy, tension can occur, like, yeah, like, or that you start shivering or something, just let it happen. It's, it's just a body, body's way of releasing tension and it will fade. Contraction means relaxation. So the harder you contract, the deeper the relaxation. All right, um, and before we start, I want you to all uh, close your eyes. For a second. No, that's not necessary. <laughs> you can also, you can already lay down if you like. So close your eyes. Go with your attention to your heart. And if you ask yourself, what would I like to let go? What is the highest, the most unbelievable thing you could do right now if you could let go of something? Then the second question is, 
What would I like to empower today? If anything is possible, like you learned today on this event, if anything is possible, what would I like to empower in myself today? <laughs> All right, and if you're clear, you can lay down or sit down the way, just how you like it. <coughs>